Have you ever wondered what investing platform you should use that gives you cheap fees, access to the best investments, and has an easy to follow design? Then Interactive Brokers is the right platform for you. There's over 2 million people using Interactive Brokers and it's available in over 33 different countries. It's not just limited to stocks and ETFs, it also offers some cryptocurrency, foreign currency, and precious metals as well. And I'll be showing you everything from setting up an account to making your first investment. So firstly, to make an account, you can either jump on your computer and search Interactive Brokers, click on the first link and go to the top right corner and go create an account. There's also an online app that you can use. So either option is gonna work. For when you're making your account, it's just the same as making a profile on Instagram or Facebook, but you'll also need a few extra pieces of info like your driver's license or your passport, just something to verify your ID identity and this just adds an extra layer of security to the platform. This is completely standard amongst all investing platforms and it's just a normal part of making an account. I won't be covering all of the different investment options but I'll go through the main ones. So firstly there's ETFs. Now these are exchange traded funds. Basically they're just a collection of multiple different companies all put together based on a investment goal. So you can have ETFs that will track specific commodities like gold or silver, certain sectors in the market like technology, healthcare or finance but most notably there's ETFs that will give you access to a country's stock market. So in America there's the S&P 500, in Australia the ASX 200, in New Zealand you have the NZX top 50 and with these you get a nice representation of all the major companies in a specific country's stock market. So for the S&P 500 you get access to big American American businesses like Disney, Coca-Cola, Amazon, Google, Tesla, Facebook, pretty much every major company in the world is held in the S&P 500. So on average you'll get a return of about 8 to 10 percent with the S&P 500. This varies based on certain years. Some years it might go up 20 percent, other years it might do nothing and it may also lose some of its value as well. It just depends but it does give that consistent return of 8 to 10 percent across Across multiple decades that's the average that you can expect of course past performance doesn't indicate future performance but it's been providing that return for about a hundred years now with an ETF you don't get as much control over your investment you are essentially participating in the market you can't pick out a certain company you just get a standard average return you're not going to become a millionaire overnight or see a huge jump in your portfolio value but at the same time you won't see a massive drop either so they are a great place to get started in the stock market since they can be quite consistent, reliable, and they tend to reduce the amount of risk that you're taking with your money. So moving on to individual stocks, these give you more control over your money. It's all put into one specific business and you can get a better potential for a return. So you might invest into companies like Amazon, Google, Facebook, Apple. These are more consistent types of investments. They're blue chip companies. They're well established. They've stood the test of time. You typically don't get a huge return with these kinds of businesses. But then there's also more tech or growth based companies like Tesla or Nvidia, which can have a much larger return. So at the moment, Nvidia, that's gone up about 700% in the past year. And because there's a lot of interest, hype, speculation about its ability to use AI, all of these new and exciting features help to increase the public perception, more people invest into it and the stock price in turn goes up. Of course it's hard to tell how long that's going to continue but while the stock price is going up it can be a good place to make a profit in the market. In the past year Nvidia has gone up about 200%. Then there's also Sorry. cryptocurrency. Now you don't get access to all the cryptos the same way you might with an exchange like Coinbase or Binance but of course you get access to the main ones like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin Cash. Crypto can give you a really good return depending on when you invest into it. Bitcoin can go up several hundred percent in just a few months but at the same time it can lose its value very quickly. Historically it does lose about 80% of its value every few years so even if you've made a 500% return if you can't sell and lock in some of those gains even a big return if it loses 80% you're still going to be most likely at a loss. So there's a 
the big risk versus reward with cryptocurrency but if you do your research and you know what you're doing and you don't get greedy and just hold on forever it can be a great place to invest in moving on to the fees to demonstrate this we'll be taking a look at how much it would cost to buy 10 shares of nvidia currently nvidia is trading for 1095 dollars so that means the investment is going to be worth about ten thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars so let's say you're an australian user of interactive brokers and you deposit your your 1000 AUD onto the platform. To buy an American stock, you have to convert that AUD into USD. If you're not depositing US dollar onto the platform, then you are going to have to convert that currency and there's a fee for that. So for this example, we'll be charged two US dollars to convert our currency from AUD into the US dollar. So there's a few different fee structures for interactive brokers, but I like to personally use the interactive brokers pro fixed pricing plan. This can be one of the easier options when you're trying to figure out the cost that you're going to have to pay to make this investment. So for us we're only going to have to pay one US dollar for our brokerage fee to invest our money into Nvidia. So in total if we were to invest almost $11,000 into Nvidia stock by purchasing 10 shares we would only be charged three US dollars to do this. This is extremely cheap comparable to any other platform. It's some of the lowest fees available and that's what makes Interactive Brokers such a great platform regardless if you're a beginner or a seasoned veteran in the stock market. Now on Interactive Brokers, it's also very helpful if we were to sell that Nvidia stock, we can hold that money in US dollars on the platform. You can hold multiple currencies. You could hold the Australian dollar, British pound and US dollar all in your wallet. So then you're not having to repeatedly complete the currency exchange fee. You can just hold different currencies on the platform and just deploy that money when you want without having to go through the currency exchange process or pay a fee for this either. So that's really helpful and that's not something you find typically on other brokers as well. Also the fees for cryptocurrency are very cheap at 0.18% of your investment up to $1,000 and that's a lot cheaper even than big exchanges like Coinbase. For Coinbase Pro it's 0.6%. So let's move on to actually making an investment using interactive brokers. So firstly when you sign in and jump on the home screen this is what the front page is going to look like. In the top right corner you can search for the particular stock that you're wanting to invest in so i'm just going to type in apple at the top here and here it pops up click on stock and then it's going to bring up a stock chart for you so this provides a lot of detailed information about that particular business you can view the stock graph in different formats so there's candles bar graph there's a line graph as well there's a whole lot of customization that you can go through and take a look at the stock chart with different indicators you can also view the stock chart across different time points say days months or years to get a good idea of how that stock has been performing over time there's also a lot of detailed info about the business like the open high and low the volume and dividend yield there's also events that are coming up about the business as well so all great information to help you keep up to date on that particular stock and help you determine if you would like to invest in it so then in the bottom left corner the blue button click on that if you want to buy some shares now you can either buy your shares either in a dollar amount or as the number of shares that you want to purchase so if you're someone who just wants to say invest ten dollars into apple you don't want to spend the whole 232 us dollars that can be a bit much when you first start investing so if you want to buy fractional shares and just put in 10 20 50 dollars that's possible as well so just click on the right side of the screen where it says shares and you can go to usd so when you buy you're always going to be purchasing in usd for an american company like apple then just select how much you want to invest so so on the left side it currently has limit order that's where you set the price where you want the investment to be made so i just go with market buy so you're just buying the shares of apple at the current market price of 232 us dollars and then just select how much you want to invest so you can just put in ten dollars here and it'll actually convert the number of shares that you're going to receive so if you were 
were to just put in $10, you'd get 0 0.0429 shares of Apple. And this can be an easier way to start with fractional shares, but you're not having to buy a whole share of a company. So just click on buy in the bottom left corner, and then those shares will be purchased for you. Initially, this can seem really complicated. It might seem daunting or challenging to make your first investment, but once you've done it a few times, it does get a lot easier and it can be done in a few clicks of a button and you don't have to spend much time thinking about it. So knowing how Interactive Brokers works is important, but how does it stack up to its competitors like Stake, Webull, Hatch, Sharesies? There's a lot of other brokers that are available and how do you know which one you should be using with all these different options if you want to see a complete guide how interactive brokers stacks up to its competitors then make sure to check out this video on screen to help give you more of an idea of what platform you should be using to buy your shares